What's going on guys? So uh, today we have a Yabo from um, possibly my youngest viewer. So I just opened this box and there was this uh, array of knives in here and a litter. All right, actually it was part of the letter on the outside of the box, which I'll explain in a second. But let's read this letter here. So it says, hey Jeff, I am nine years old and I collect a lot of knives and here are some that I have just sitting collecting dust. Thank you for all you do. Uh, I've been watching your channel for about one year now, and I love it. Thank you. I have a YouTube channel called Fun and Ridiculous Times. Uh, thank you. Sincerely, Colby. So, <laughs> Fun and Ridiculous Times, it spells fart, which, uh, you know, he's nine, so <laughs> that's kind of expected. Although I'm not nine. I'm far from nine and still funny, so good for you, um, Colby. <laughs> so anyway. So yeah, this was kind of surprising. I mean, I've actually had people send messages before saying like, hey, you know, I'm X and X age, like I'm 17 now or I'm 19 or I'm 25 and I said I was watching since I was 13 or 15 or whatever the case may be. So I know there's like, you know, all kinds of people watching the videos for, for various reasons, right? Now I love knives when I was nine as well, um, but I didn't actually start like having a collection of knives until around maybe 10 or 11, something like that. That's because of Boy Scouts and, and the rest, right? So this was like, you know, kind of a big surprise, you know, seeing that number nine. I mean, my niece is nine. Uh, I can't imagine her, you know, shipping someone something on the internet. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's a lot of trust there and stuff. Clearly at nine years old, I don't feel like he, uh, you know, just boxed this stuff up and went to the post office and, and just, you know, handed the clerk money and said, here, I want to ship this. I don't think that happened. Uh, I think a parent or guardian was involved here. And if that parent or guardian is watching the video, um, I would love if you contacted me so I can uh, just you know, double check on that. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll go over the knives here. This was really nice. He just said these were kind of laying around on the outside of the box. Uh, he had mentioned that this one, which is just a blade and has the pocket clip kind of jammed on the top. He said he used this as a, a box cutter. All right, so there's a note there. Um, also, there's this knife. This doesn't have, it's missing a scale here. I actually had this knife at some point. Um, so let's see what we have on this one. This one is kind of a um, slip joint style, but not branded at all. This one's really cool. This is a, a figurative uh, knife pattern, the, the lady leg. Um, and this is actually really like historic. There's a lot of people who collect these specifically. You can use the heel on here as a, a bottle opener, which is really nice. I don't know if he knew that or not. <clears throat> but this one is a Rough Rider 440 stainless. Like I said, a cool little, very usable knife. Love it. Here's a knife from uh, Frost Cutlery. These two came in boxes. I just put the boxes off to the side for now. But here's a Frost Cutlery knife, a little lock back. This is Frost Cutlery on the front. German stainless, uh, rust free. This is rust free. But then on the top here, it says Pakistan. So German blade, maybe? Made in uh, Pakistan for Frost Cutlery. Frost Cutlery is all over the place, especially in the later years as far as like manufacture. <clears throat> um, actually, Frost Cutlery in the, the very early years, they made some really, really decent knives. You still see them like in the, you know, maybe late 70s, early 80s and stuff. Um, a lot of awesome knives are out there. They're way more popular. When the 90s kind of hit and I got into knives in the early 2000s, that's when you see like a lot of Frost Cutlery on like, you know, the cutlery uh, corner. You know, three in the morning selling knives. <laughs> Jim Frost would actually go on there and, and do his thing. And, and God rest his soul, Jim Frost passed away not too long ago. I posted on Instagram. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, it's a big part of the knife industry. Even if you think the knives are, are low quality, it is what it is. There's way more people out there buying cheap knives, you know, low quality knives, and there are people buying nice ones. Um, but still, very usable knife. <clears throat> then we have here a, uh, a two-bladed uh, slip joint with a nice rifle on it. All right. This one says Kentucky Rifle on the blade. The actual uh, stamping says Kentucky Rifle on one side and Louisville, Kentucky on the other. Which is interesting because you would think, oh wow, it's, it's made in America. Um, but on the back, it says, hmm, let me zoom in so you can see these tank stamps a little better together. Let that focus. So that says BSC14 China. I'm not sure what company that's referring to. All right, but again, that, uh, that other blade, let's have a quick peek at it. Kentucky Rifle and Louisville, Kentucky. Pretty interesting. Kentucky Rifle. Yeah, it's cool. I can dig it. Then this one is actually super interesting. I'm going to put this one into my interesting opening mechanism uh, knife collection because it has something I've never seen before. 
So this is a, an assisted knife, but there's a little plastic piece in here. All right, there's actually jimping on it. Let me zoom in and show you that. All right, so this works as a safety. All right, so you can see that little jimping. This pops up and out of the way. It's just kind of loose, hanging there. But that actually uh, functions as a safety. All right, and then it's just assisted. And the marking on this one says... Uh, well, there's a motorcycle there and flames... Let's get, see if we can get closer. Iron Horse USA. So, I mean, the logo is Iron Horse USA, but I would tend to believe this is probably made in China, maybe Taiwan, something like that. <clears throat> but super interesting. Little liner lock does have a, a single thumb stud. All right. But, um, again, that, that mechanism on the bottom, I've never seen anything quite like that. All right. Where it actually clicks, and then you can push it down. It kind of clicks in a second position and holds that blade in. So, you, you can't... Pull this open without moving that that's kind of cool i just never seen it before then we have this little knife here let's zoom in here this is funny because this one actually says dragonfly on it uh clearly it's not a spyderco dragonfly even though it somewhat resembles it in some way shape or form but uh super you know um just common keychain knife in fact i've sold these before to gas stations <clears throat> when i was a young entrepreneur <laughs> of like I don't know, I was 19 or 20 or something like that. Um, when I, where I was living in uh, Franklin, New Jersey, um, there was a couple gas stations around, and uh, I would buy the jars of these keychain knives, and I would, I would pay, I don't know, like 20 bucks for them, maybe $15 for a jar of like 50 of these, no joke. And I would go to the gas stations, and I would tell the owners there, I'm like, hey, you want to buy this, uh, this jar for me? Sell it to you 50 bucks, you know, and you can sell each one for whatever it is, two bucks. You know, they can obviously set the price. And, you know, if they give me 50, they sell a jar of 50 for, for $2 a piece, they make 100 bucks. You know, they make 50 bucks. So I'm making money, they're making money. It worked out like, I don't know, three, four times. I thought that was like the coolest thing at the time. <laughs> so, yeah, that just kind of brings back some memories. And then finally, we have an interesting little combo here for personal hygiene. I like this. I mean, it's kind of old and stuff. It's a little beat up. But uh, totally functional. We got a little housing for some fingernail clippers. All right, the fingernail clippers are just clippers, and that's because the fingernail tools are on the side here, which is built into the the little pouch here. So not too long ago, I forget what video it was, but I showed the little individual. Actually, it was my my bob bag maybe, or the stuff I had in my car. One of those videos I showed that. But I use this tool all the time to clean my nails. Right. Then we have like a knife that's, this one's actually ground down. I mean, it's not that sharp, but it's sharper than most of them. Then we have the combination bottle opener and the flathead uh, screwdriver. So it's just kind of cool that that's, you know, together like that. It's interesting. So, yeah. I mean, I just wanted to share the video. I share all the Yavo stuff. Whenever people send me things, I, I make videos on it. I show my appreciation. This was just a little, it was shocking, to be honest. Um, all the stuff that, the, all these things were individually wrapped with this paper. And I, I, <laughs> I wanted to show it to you, but... I can't because it's like from his schoolwork, you know, like literally one was like, I don't know, numbers or word association or something like papers he got from school, like homework, like he wrapped up these knives with his, his homework. <laughs> so I mean, like I said, it was, it was kind of cool. Um, but again, I, I have to assume that there was an adult involved here that the nine year old didn't just ship me a package. Um, so yes, I mean, if you're watching, uh, let me know, you know, again, your parents or grandparents, guardian, whoever watches you, whoever takes care of you, your legal, legal guardian, excuse me, uh, have them contact me, all right, because I'm very curious and I'd love to talk to them. Uh, and how to contact me? Through Instagram. That's the easiest. I mean, you can post a comment here, but I don't put any personal information, please. Obviously, it goes to everyone out there, regardless of your age, and most people know that, but a nine-year-old may not. So do not post any personal information on YouTube, ever. Um... But you can find me on Instagram. I'm uh, Cutler Lover Jeff on there. That's where I do a lot of trading and, and different things like that. Um, so yeah, just uh, have your your parents hit me up. Love to talk to them. So that is it for now. Thank you so much for uh, for watching. And um, yeah, it's just like I said, it's a reminder when I make these videos. It's just like in my mind, I'm not consciously thinking of who's watching the video. I just make it for anyone. But I, I have to assume. That a lot of my audience is like, you know, 20 something dudes, you know, but I know I have women who watch. I, I have old women, I, I have young women, I have uh, young kids, I have senior citizens, you know, I get a message once in a while from someone who's like 80 years old, like, hey, yeah, I remember when I was a kid and my dad had this, and, 
And it's like, it's amazing. So especially when they're a lot older, you know, they've been through the ringer, they've seen all these different things. And I mean, I can only imagine if I was really into knives like 60 years ago, you know, how the industry has changed. You know what I'm saying? All these modern knives, it's, it's almost like cars. You know, I mean, if you first got in the cars, in like, I don't know, the, the 40s or something, look at what's driving around now. It, it couldn't be any different, you know what I'm saying? Except the fact there's four wheels. So it's just, it's fascinating. The whole thing's fascinating to me. And this was definitely a reminder of, um, of the audience being so broad. And you guys know, like, I keep it clean. I don't, you know, use a lot of profanity. I, I never really did anyway. But now YouTube, of course, is against that kind of stuff, which is not bad for me because I don't have to filter myself all that much. I mean, if you hung out with me in, in person and stuff, yeah, I drop the F-bomb every now and again, throw a little uh, S-word out there. I mean, it's no big deal. It's just part of my speech, you know what I'm saying? But I do try to stay a little conscious of that kind of stuff because you never really know who's watching, you know? And although I'm just posting these for anyone to watch, I, I want to be a good influence, you know? I want to be a positive role model if there's someone who's younger watching. And so I am kind of conscious of that, you know? So if you have YouTube channels and you're watching this one, uh, just, you know, think of the same thing. You never really know who's watching, you know? So just be careful of those messages you put out there um, you know, especially if they're, they're just not great for kids. Not to say you should censor yourself because you should just do what you want to do. It's really up to people's parents to censor their kids uh, and what they watch. Uh, I've kind of been in a gray area with that for years. Not on my own channel, but other people's channels. Like, I watch a lot of stuff and I'm thinking, man, I hope kids don't watch this. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it really is up to the parents. And I remember being a kid. I remember, you know, being in like the school library when I was in like, I don't know, sixth grade. And watching like beheading videos and like all this gore and, and you know dirty things and all kinds of stuff you know what i'm saying so uh, you know it is what it is i don't know so anyway uh that is it just wanted to uh share this and and give my thanks i really appreciate it it was a very nice gesture so that's all hopefully you guys have a fantastic day and uh i will see you tomorrow with a brand new video take care